Adam, you know Chris Scott pretty well. He copped a fair bit of flack this week about team selections and, and their poor performance. He seems to be under pressure. What reaction are you expecting from him? No, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I think the merry-go-round continues with the scrutiny in the industry. So it's, it's week to week. So I'm, he's a big boy. Are you expecting he'll change the rough situation though? Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, he might. That's, that's not up to me. So um, we'll just confront whoever we play against. So it's not really a West Coast issue. Not at the moment. Once we'll, wait, we'll get the team and then we'll, we'll work through it. You prepared, you prepared for Stanley, though, didn't you? Well, yeah, probably, but I, I'm not sure if he played against Brisbane or North Melbourne. In the, in the, so three of the last four weeks, he, he hasn't played in the ruck. So, yeah, I know there's been a lot of talk, but, um, yeah, we're looking at the collective with Geelong. You know, their, their, their body of work for the, for the last 12 months, they're number one at all the areas that we value. So clearances and contested possessions and... Um, the hardest team in the comp to score against. None of that's gone away. So we're, um, we're preparing for a pretty big battle. There's been a message from Chris got today, Patrick Dangerfield yesterday, to take more risks. You know, maybe they try and change things up to make them more dangerous. Oh, right? look, I, I, think, I think they take what you give them. So if, if we're not defending well, then we'll get exposed. And so uh, I don't think teams change their system too much this time of year. And the reason why they got to where they are and where, where we are is because you, you back your your style in, so um, I can't see too much change, but we prepare for his, for everything. And, Does that um, mean you'll start with your team then and you'll go with the two Ruckman as they are? And no, that's, uh, that's, that's selection. I'm talking the way you play is probably the way you play. So um, I don't think there'll be too much change for both sides in terms of how we go about it from a system point of view. There's always things you want to try and take away from the opposition, but you, you never get too far away from your own personal brand. How, how do you look at selection? Obviously, you've got a winning team at the moment yeah. and you've got blokes who haven't played, blokes who have played in Waffle. Where are you at when you look at the 22 from last week? Uh, that's a good question. We, we, we had some um, real selection issues last week with some injuries. You know, we, we took a few risks. I think every team in the first week of the finals, despite the fact there was a bye, um, probably got presented with risk-taking activity with, with uh, match committee and we had our own with probably five players. Um, so we're really pleased that we got through the game um, and we all took the risk. I think every team took a risk of some description and we got, we got through, we got by. So that's really pleasing. Now it gives us a, a good problem with um, less, less risk now. I think a lot of our players have got minutes under their belt. Now it's down to form and um, what's the best match up for, for the Cats. So is stability important for you at this time of year for, for finals? That blokes going knowing that they're their, their spots there and that they can just focus on what yeah, they have to do. Yeah, I think it's, that's it. I mean, squad mentality has always been something we've been trying to project with our, with our group. So I think we had 27 to choose from last week with our squad, um, you know, with the, the numbers we held back from Waffle. It will be similar again this week. We managed probably four players last week in, in, the, in the Waffle on Sunday. It's a five-day break from that game. And we held a couple over. So we, we've got main training today. We'll work through it all. See how the matchups look, and we'll go from there. With Oscar Allen, it was listed as knee yeah. soreness. How long has he been battling with that, and how serious is it, and how is he now? It's not it's not serious. No, it's probably just a second year player trying to get through full season. So um, I think it's his fat pad or something like that. Something that's not not um, majorly serious, but it's hampered him in the last month. So um, yeah, he'll train fully today, and he'll be a part of our part of the mix. This has been so good for you all season and so consistent for such a young player. How hard was it to, to tell him not? Well, I was a bit sore last week, so um, the, we'll go. We'll work through that this week. I mean, we've got a different looking team with with Nick back in it and Hickey playing. So trying to manage that that's that's um, that's a different look than we've had for most of the year. So that's that's that affects Oscar with uh, with our tools and how we want to set up. So. Could you go in with one ruckman then? Could you go in with just Nick Nat and he comes out and Oscar Allen is the back? Uh, we could look at that, yeah. Um, do we play an extra tall? Geelong got a really tall tall back line, um, but they're quick as well. Um, really good intercept back half team. So we've got, we got to work through all that. So he's definitely in the mix and no decisions have been made. Is, are you trying to work out the Jake Waterman, Oscar Allen? That seems to be also your, your other yeah, challenge, isn't it? And Jake had a really good game. Yeah, they've all got roles uh, within our forward line, and so it doesn't matter who's in the team, it's a similar role. So Jake's, 
you know, probably a little bit more versatile, got a bit more uh, endurance and play a bit higher, but yeah, it's a similar position. How's Nelson pulled up from the head clash and how did you view his game last week? He's pulled up well. Yeah, no, no need for the Cox State test. I think he's, he's fine. Um, I, I look, I was pleased with his performance last week. He played on Tipper Moody. I think Tipper kicked a couple of goals. One of them was when he got, got that head knock. Um, he was probably the best player on the ground against Collingwood the week before. So we thought he did a pretty good job. You speak about the squad mentality. What, what do you say to, to players like Petrocelli and Allen and, and Cameron who are outside of the squad at the moment that could possibly get their chance? No, nah, they're in the squad. That's well, the squad yeah, mentality, that's mate. Yeah, <laughs> nah, they might be outside of the team. But I, I, think, I think our players, one thing we're really proud of this year is what we've done at Waffle level. And they went down on the weekend, but they're playing with so much spirit that half that side's ready to play AFL. So they understand it's tough to get into. Um, we went through this last year. So, and we called upon several players at this time of year. So I can't see that changing too much. Do you use an example of Schofield last year just to give them a bit of Oh, they know all that. Yeah, this, this is not new. So we've, we've, yeah, we've been talking like that for a long time. Which make about Hutching's performance despite uh, coming back? It was a tough day for Hutch. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, uh, having said that, I think, um, you know, it, it helped give our forwards a purpose with defence. And, um, and I thought Saad played really well, but, um, yeah, I thought the collective was, we defended well, so having that mindset was was good for us. Do you expect Hutchings to go to, say, Stewart or uh, yeah, maybe one and a half backs, or do you expect him to go to Dangefield and Do I expect him? He'll do what he's told. Yeah. That's what he, um, yeah. Oh, look, I, I haven't gone through that yet. So we've got, we've got match committee tonight, we've got training today, um, we've got to work through all that, but, um, you know, when he plays, there's normally a role. Can he, he play midfield? Tag. Can he play midfield tag now? Or because he missed a bit, fair bit of footy, um, was Saad because you wanted him on Saad, or was it because he couldn't couldn't necessarily run the amount of miles yes. he would need to do in, in the no, midfield? No, no, he was right to go. Yeah, so it's more um, matchups. You know, if he plays in the midfield, who gets squeezed out? You know, how do we do all that? So that's that's what we're working through. You haven't played Geelong much forever, really. You played once a year for your Didn't entire we? time as coach. Is it difficult to go into games where you haven't played a team for a long time? It was around six this year, well, round I know three what last year. Around six this year. Yeah, but you haven't, played for, you haven't really seen them live with your blokes against them much. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah we, we know how they play. Um, they know how we play. We, we were really disappointing in, in Geelong. Round six, um, we got beaten in all areas. So um, that was a really disappointing day. And I think last time was probably the Optus last year, was it? Yeah. Early in the year. So, yeah, um, that's just the draw. How much time are you planning for, for Nick this week? Man? You said he had 53% that he could have played more, but you were drunk. What, what do you think against the Cats? Uh, I, we probably held back a little bit. He was coming off that ankle injury. You know, he's one of the worries that we had going into the game. How, how is he going to go? Um, we left it to the last minute for him to unleash. And that's why we're so pleased with the fact he can just, you know, flick a switch and get into that mode. Uh, he, he had more minutes in him on the weekend, so how much more will depend on the game and how he's going, how he's feeling. But you know, I, I dare say he's, he's around 70 minute, 80 minute mark is, is what we normally would get out of him, and um, that's what we'd expect this week. Are you hoping that someone pulls his hair? So it's <laughs> it's getting long there. I'm not sure what he's going to do with it. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not hoping that, but. Uh, don't don't poke the bear if you do. He's a good little athlete. He poses himself, and when you need him to, in the middle, he'll go, right, I'm getting this one. Especially if he loses one or, or makes a mistake. He wants to, you know... Make amends? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I've said this a bit about Nick. Um, you know, I think we've gone past the possessions and the marks and the influence. I think everyone knows he can have influence on a game with just his presence, which is just so, so unique. I mean, Dangerfield's the same. He just wills himself onto the game. So Selwood's the same, Hawkins. So all oh, A-grade talent across the board. But Nick's, Nick does it in a different way, which makes him unique. Do you train? Long did, didn't they? They willed themselves at the end there, led by Dangerfield, almost to pinch the game. Well, they've been doing that for a long time. So they're, they're, they haven't, they're not going anywhere too long. So the way they play is, stands up. Now, they might have been disappointing that they didn't get a win, but it was getting pretty close there in the last 10 minutes. Collingwood didn't score in the last 60 minutes. They had four inside 50s in the last quarter. So um, I don't think it was a disaster. It was disappointing they lost, I'm sure. But um, we, we're looking at a lot of elements that makes them really strong. That was still there. Do you train at the MCG when you get over there at all? Yeah, we do. Yep. Train at the G. Beautiful. Yeah. You train at the lights or during the day? 
Oh, it'll be during the day. Yeah. But no, that's that's good for us. We really enjoy that. Uh, we don't get to play on the G very often, so um, yeah, we're, that's important. Are you happy it's at the G and not down at uh, the long named ground? Oh, we're we're, we're travelling three and a half thousand k's every second week, and we're doing that again this week. So yeah, we we're playing away. How many blokes will you, will you take given it's Wednesday afternoon at your team until Thursday? Uh, we'll Probably two extra, maybe three. Now that we've got our waffle boys are out of contention, we can we can take a few more emergencies, but it won't be for any reason other than just because we can. Your good form at the MCG over the past couple of years. What do you put that down to, and how much influence does say off the stadium and, and facilities here play a part? As well? um, a little bit, yeah. When we were playing home games at Subi, we were um, it was difficult to prepare for the MCG. We we couldn't even find an oval to train at that. Um, that we could prepare with. So I think halfway through last year, Lath Lane or the start of last year, they'd, they'd built the oval, not the facility. So we got to train here a little bit and then we moved to Optus and our game naturally opened up a little bit the way we played. So that that definitely, that's helped us. And then when you get to the MCG, probably doesn't feel as um, foreign as it, what it used to. And then you combine that with just our experience. I mean, we've we've got an experienced side. So, and that's been built over the last seven years. So that, that, that helps as well. I, mean, I think we've probably played in 10 finals since, since 15 and um, a lot of them have been at the G. And when you look at Geelong's midfield, both as individuals and as a group, what, what goes through your mind? Well, the number one at clearances and contested possession and it's based on how they go about it. So they're very honest, um, hard working and they've got talent. <laughs> so that's why they finished on top of the ladder. How much do you look to take them on versus shut them down? Like, how do you? Oh, uh, that that that's that's just part of the battle. Uh, I don't think it's an in instruction to do either. It's just play them on their merits, and um, I'm sure they do the same with us. And on Jamie Cripps, is the leader of the small forwards, but he probably goes under the radar over east. You know, with Liam Ryan taking lots of marks and really yeah. early. That's team. okay. Don't talk okay. about him. And how do you rate Cripps both as a, a leader and as a player and the whole package really? Uh, yeah, well, he's he's worked on his craft since. I mean, I, I'm not sure when he got to the club, but when I got here, he was still pretty young and raw, and he, he's just done it through hard work. So everything he's got to now is is just through hard work. So he's he's the modern day high half forward, repeat speed, uh, finishes off his work and defends well. So that's that's the current trend, and I think he's been a massive asset to Willie and, and Liam. Because they've got the talent, but now they've got the work, the work ethic, and that's off the back of of Jamie and what he leads with. Josh Kennedy didn't train yesterday. He never does really on Monday. We don't. No. Uh, but Willie trained today. He was the only one who didn't, who played. He hasn't had a knee Rico. No, uh, but will, okay. will, will, will he train today? He'll train today. He'll be there. Are you expecting any tricks from Chris Scott? Because they don't seem to have natural matchups for both of your Indigenous boys. Um, what are you expecting there? No, there's no tricks in finals. No. So, no, I'm not expecting any tricks. With a midfield like theirs, um, how do you go about choosing which player to tag if Hutchins is to go to someone with so many stars in that midfield? With the midfield? With oh, well, that's always the challenge when you play a team like Geelong. You take your pick, and sometimes you don't tag because there's just, if you tag one, another jumps up. I think we tagged Kelly last time we played, and we lost by 70 points or something. So, and Hutch did a good job, kept him to 18 touches. So, do you expect? Um, oh, how do you? Uh, uh, sorry, with so much recruiting tape and also scout tape on Tim Kelly, does that help at all going into a game like this? <laughs> oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> no, he's a good player, so we we've got to do do our homework on him. Uh, how impressive have you been with the Jets this year? Jets, yeah, Jets, Jets, Jets has been great. Right He's a, le he's a leader in, in his own right. Um, it's his second season as a defender. So uh, what he does with the ball is really, really impressive and he's working really hard on how he defends as well. So that's, I think every week I see slight improvement in, in his defensive attributes and he hasn't, hasn't let us down too often. So the AFL's hurting a little bit over the last 24 hours. Did you have any sort of background or with, with Danny? Yeah, oh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, not, not, I wouldn't say we're close friends, but what, one thing I can say about the man is what, what you saw off field is what you saw on um, in terms of on and off the camera. He was, yeah, it's a good sign of someone's character that the demeanour on and off camera was the same. So, yeah, I, not a bad word said about him, I wouldn't have thought. Um, and it's such a tragedy for everyone.
including, uh, mostly the family, of course.